So the planetarium here is a 160 seat planetarium with a software that is produced entirely here in Chiang Mai. It shows you the, uh, the Milky Way, the surface of, of the moon, Mars and Venus and other planets and you could fly through oh, the uh, solar cool. system with the, the, the software that, was, that we have uh, developed it here. And also the labs here, we have the optical instrumentation lab that produces cameras and spectrographs in order to study what's on other planets and what's on other stars. I'm Michael Niu, and this is Thailand Today. We're in Chiang Mai province, in the north of Thailand, in Merim to be specific. This is the Princess Sirin Tan Astro Park, Thailand's premier astronomy learning center. It is full of interactive displays about science and a planetarium. Well, I love science and learning, so I can't wait to get inside. Today, we're joined by Dr. Wipu Rutopakan, Deputy Director of the National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand, or NARID. Sorry, Thank you so much for having us today. Well, thanks for coming. I'm excited to learn about science and about the facility that you have here. We have a lot to show you about them. What can you tell me about it? So, we're at uh, Princess Sirinton Astro Park, mm -hmm. which is the, uh, a research complex uh, comprising of this planetarium that you're seeing in the background, and also many labs that are producing instrumentation for astronomy mm -hmm. to look at stars at different wavelengths. You've already piqued my curiosity. Look at stars at different wavelengths. Wavelength. What does looking at stars at different wavelengths do? Good question. So electromagnetic waves like mm. lights that, that, that we're uh, seeing with our eyes is just one of the spectrum spectra of mm. all the electromagnetic uh, light from radio wave all the way up to x-ray so astronomers uses all these uh, wavelengths to study mm. astrophysical uh, phenomena uh, including what our eyes can see mm -hmm. we do have an exhibit down the basement of this building as well that I'd be very happy to show you what you look like yeah. in the infrared light. Oh, that'll be interesting. I think uh, hopefully we'll have time in the second half of the program for Absolutely. a bit of a tour of the facility. So the planetarium here is a 160 seat planetarium with a software that is produced entirely here in Chiang Mai. It's really neat, I, I, I have to tell you. It shows you the, uh, the Milky Way, the surface of, of the moon, Mars and Venus and other planets, and you can fly through the oh, uh, solar cool. system with the, the, the software that, was, that we have uh, developed mm -hmm. it here. And also the labs here, we have the optical instrumentation lab that produces mm -hmm. cameras and spectrographs to look at uh, the lights of the uh, stars and celestial objects mm -hmm. and decompose them into uh, signatures of uh, elements and uh, molecules in order to study what's on other planets and what's on other stars. Can you we, share with me some of the uh, interesting findings that you have discovered within at Within the past year, for example, uh, our researcher has uh, discovered the first quadrupole asteroid system. What is a quadrupole asteroid? Quadrupole asteroid system is a, a system of uh, four chunks of space rocks orbiting each other. This is the uh, first time okay. that we have discovered this uh, complex system uh, like, like this one. The first time that four asteroids in, in a group has been discovered. So they're spinning and they're spinning they're and, and orbiting space. each other. But the important thing is not about uh, the discovery itself, but rather the software, the technology that we have to develop to mm -hmm. enable those discoveries. Because this is where astronomy is important. It's not just that we are curious about the stars, mm. but astronomy is, is a very extreme science. You can't just go out to see, uh, for example, ba the most basic thing, mm. what does our Milky Way look like? We're inside the Milky Way. Yeah. So we can't just wander out 100,000 light year and True. look back. If, we, if only we could do that, 
life would be very simple, but we can't simply travel out 100,000 light years to look back. So we have to study the Milky Way from within the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. And this is a very complex business. It's like studying the entire city without mm -hmm. leaving your yeah. bedroom, without leaving your house. And, and this is what makes astronomy really complex, really challenging. We have to detect, for example, the signals from stars that are a trillion times fainter than the moon mm -hmm. in order to learn about galaxies in their formative era or, for example, the uh, radio wave that we have to catch with our 40 meter dish is even fainter than a signal of one single phone wow. put on planet Pluto. So these are the, the, the extreme mm -hmm. challenges in astronomy and it forces us to develop new solutions Mm -hmm. new technologies. Now, I'd heard that NASA was responsible for some of the biggest leaps and innovations in science. And that was driven by the Apollo program. Mm -hmm. The challenge was so immense that, it, that we had to invent everything new to accommodate those missions. Astronomy as well, but the investment mm -hmm. level in astronomy is one thousands of uh, mm -hmm. times less than actually sending astro astronauts to the moon. So that's why this is a good uh, investment strategy mm -hmm. for a country like Thailand. We don't have to pay much, but we're investing in developing technology yeah. and human capacity that goes with the technology. Right, that and it goes to... beyond just studying the stars, but it exactly. has real life implications so here So if you for go down in our basement, uh, yeah. you see our labs, a clean room, radio frequency technologies, yeah. or you have to wear the, the, the clean room mm -hmm. uh, apparatus to go into our uh, equipment, uh, optical instrumentation mm -hmm. lab, but you're invited. I, well, I'm definitely looking forward to that. All right. uh, you, you said you had a, a large radio dish, and I'm assuming you have a telescope. On uh, Mount Intenon. On Mount, okay, so At you're, getting, summit, you're uh, getting infor uh, information from different, different places. Lanes. Are you also uh, sharing information with other research centers around the world? It's all public. It's all public. It's all public. Well, we share the same sky. So do you get, do you also get information from NASA being sent yeah. here the other way? So uh, most of astronomy is all public. So for mm -hmm. example, I, I use Hubble Space Telescope for my own research. I use uh, uh, the incoming data from the James Webb Space Telescope. I was about for, to ask. Yeah. So we, we're receiving the, uh, the new data from James Webb Space Telescope mm -hmm. within the next year that it start gathering data. Speaking of the basement and this part of the Astro Research Center, we talked a little bit about your labs, but let's talk a bit now about your Science Center facility. How would you say this area benefits the youth of today? Well, I think our youth naturally have their innate interest in stars, in dinosaurs, in Mm -hmm. many curious things like these. It's our job to, to, to serve as a channel for, for them to actually realize these dreams. For example, you would come here to see the ring of Saturn, to see the moons of Jupiter, mm -hmm. to see the surface of, of our own moon. It's really awesome. Have, have you seen that with your eyes? The surface of the moon. Well, I tell you what, one of the most interesting experiences I've had was going uh, to visit the storage facility at the Royal Ontario Museum. And I got to hold a rock. Now, it wasn't just any normal rock. It, and, and keep in mind, to get there, I had walked past rows and rows of gold and silver and giant chunks of diamonds still embedded in the rock. But this tiny little red rock was the most interesting thing that I've ever got to hold. And it was a piece of Mars that had broken off when it was hit the by meteor. Right. And it fell That's here awesome. and it was collected. Get goosebumps hearing that. And so that experience of, you know, not just holding something, but, but now using technology to feel like you're there, ah, it's, it's just so exciting to me. That's really awesome. And uh, I get goosebumps uh, hearing that. And here we have a piece of meteorite ah. that you can touch as well to get that experience. I, I think it's, th this is precisely the kind of thing that we need in Thailand mm -hmm. to, for, for, for kids to be able to, to touch a yeah. piece of outer space and get that feeling that you just described, but enabled it for, for all youth in Thailand mm -hmm. and also for them to be able to see with their eyes the surface of the moon. You see craters and mountains and, and 
all kinds of features on, on our own moon. Mm -hmm. It's totally different from, from what you see with your eyes. It's one little moon, but yeah. with the telescope, you see the, the surface. And it's really cool. I mean, the, what, what got me in astronomy was in my sixth grade, mm. that I saw this with my eyes for the first time. It's really awesome. And also the ring of Saturn, clouds on Jupiter, ice cap on Mars. This is the kind of thing that you get to see with the telescope that we offer to the public for free in the winter. Of course, you have to come here in the winter uh, because in the winter. here wow. is monsoon season. It's, uh, why, why did we come in the summer again? Well, you're invited again in okay. winter. And that our observatory there is going to be open for the public. And, and you're invited again to, to join us every Saturday uh, uh, from 6 to 10 p.m. That okay. uh, whenever the sky is clear, if it's thunderstorm, we don't open, okay? I'll definitely take you up on that. But first, let's take a quick break. But don't go away. We'll be back with more of Thailand today and a tour of the facility. NBT World, a vision of Thailand. Welcome back. You're watching Thailand Today. We continue our discussion about what's on offer here at the Princess Sirinthon Astro Park with Dr. Wipu. Time now to take a tour. And this is... Well, a chance for you to touch a piece from outer space. It's Again? a real meteorite. It's a, I mean, it looks and feels like a piece of fused metal. Look what that is, exactly. It's a almost uh, ah. almost entirely iron and nickel and here you can try to lift this little piece up of course we have to put it in a cage but well, if you try to ah, that's just so lift people can't it up, pull it out it's really heavy it's much I heavier than I what imagine, it looks uh, like a lot of kids could probably fit their hands through uh, yeah that's uh, designed for yeah that yeah, is a chunk of metal much, it's a chunk of metal i think and, uh, well, I was going to say, I think a lot of people, uh, myself included, were under the assumption that a lot of meteorites and asteroids were just made out of rock, but actually... There are several kinds, the, uh, the rocky kind and the metal kind, and you must be wondering, how on earth do we know that that piece of metal is actually meteorite? Well, now I am. And the way we know it is by cutting the, uh, this, uh, these uh, chunks mm -hmm. of metal up. And you can see the crystal inside. It's a, it's a crystal uh -huh. of the metal. You don't get that from any metals on Earth because it is the, 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 the effect of uh, the cooling of these metal in space over millions of years. But another really cool thing I want to show you is this cosmic ray detector, which is also made here in Chiang Mai. And What's really cool about it is that in every single second, particles, high energy particles from space, which we call the cosmic ray, mm -hmm. goes through our body. Millions of them go through our body every second, but they don't interact with anything inside us at all. Just in fact, right us. the cosmic ray can, get, it can just zip through the whole Earth without causing any harm. For in every second, like it goes I said, through the entire planet. The entire planet. But to detect them, we need this cosmic ray detector, which is this apparatus you're seeing here. And these these glowing these lines that are appearing. This that, is live. This is happening this right, is now. Live. These are right now. This is live. Right now. Coming through the ceiling. Coming going through into the through ceiling. Here, going through the planet. Going through the planet. And by the time now, that you see the trail, is already out Conceivably, if someone made a cosmic ray detector exactly on the other side of the Earth to this, would you then get? reverse cosmic rays coming out? In theory, out. you would. In theory, you would. So the cosmic ray is, is directly linked to the way we evolve from, well, monkey to us. That's super fascinating. It's uh, incredible to think that these little grow, growing lines over millions of years Can could have shaped, it shaped the, the, the well, planet that us. we know. Yeah. This is an 
an exhibition that we're proudest of, this Astronomy Insight, mm -hmm. entirely made here in Chiang Mai by our staff. And it shows how we study astronomy, what kind of tools. You were asking me earlier, what is this light in radio, light in different wavelength? What about it? Here is we're gonna see where we're here. gonna see all, right, all of go. that. So, starting from very simple question, like why the sky is blue. So this little apparatus here is how we look, is how we simulate what the atmosphere is doing to light. Look this way. The light that goes all the way through mm -hmm. is red. All the blue light gets scattered away. So this is a demonstration of scattering in our own atmosphere. You have to look at it from this angle, mm -hmm. but you do see that uh, this is why the sky is blue, because all the blue light gets scattered to us, whereas the red light goes through. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason that the sunset is always red. And it, it's these kind of things that we would like to, to convey to the, the kids, mm -hmm. that you, they have to see it for themselves to, to, to appreciate these effects. And for example, we use telescopes to focus the lights from the stars. And telescopes usually comprise of one lens to focus the light mm -hmm. into a the, single, the point. single point. And this is what the lens is. It's that simple. A piece of glass, or in this case, a, a piece of plastic. But it does the same thing of focusing the light into one spot. What if we don't, we're not just dealing with one lens. Let's try this one. Focus the light. What would happen if we put this block here? Nothing, right? Because this is a block with the... Mm -hmm. It just passes straight through. It just passes straight through. But what if we do this? Give uh, it a try. Let's see. Comes in. Comes in. Does it, what does does it, it expand again? What would it do? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it... What would it, it do? It spreads out. What? Oh. Oh, where am I putting that? Oh, there. You get the same beam back. Oh, and oh, because it's the opposite because of the other one. Because it's the opposite of the uh. other one. This is the, uh, the picture of uh, all the electromagnetic waves, different wavelength that I was talking about. So this is the visible light right here. It's only a small chunk of the entire electromagnetic spectrum from radio, microwave, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma ray. And this is the two wavelength ranges the visible and radio that we can see from the ground. Other wavelengths are blocked by the atmosphere. For example, the, ultra, the ultraviolet is blocked by the ozone layer in our atmosphere, which is a good thing because otherwise we would be getting pretty bad sunburn. X-ray is also blocked and mm -hmm. that's harmful, so that's good. Uh, gamma ray is also blocked as well. But these are the two wavelengths that we had the observatories. This one on Dying uh huh. And that one, it does get the 40 meter. Those are the two wavelengths that we can do from the ground. And these are the wavelengths that we are actively uh, exploring uh, from here within Thailand. Well, speaking of radio. Radio. Uh, it was pretty funny. We were talking earlier today, and I found out that I actually worked with his cousins at Radio Thailand for eight years. So shout out to Ben and Paul. Ben Hope and you Paul. guys are doing well. <laughs> All righty. You folks are invited here as well. And here is, for example, what you would look like in the infrared. So this is like a heat sensor, right? Mm -hmm. Infrared light is where our body is emitting light. Now, my glasses are much cooler than my face. 
So the hot part glows. No, it looks like my, my hands are is, hotter than yours. cooler, right? So at these wavelengths, for example, this one is opaque to visible light, but transparent to the infrared. You can see my hands so that's, that's how the different filters on your telescopes work. Exactly. So this is basically a filter. So there is a lot of things in, in the, in the, in the our, even our own galaxy that are opaque to optical light but transparent in the infrared. For example, okay. dusty nebula is exactly what it looks like, like this. On the other hand, this is transparent to visible light but opaque to the infrared. Okay. So we have to play these games with the objects that we are studying in the universe to extract most information from them. And that's the whole mm -hmm. point of astronomy. And that's why it's challenging and that's why it's driving us to invent, to, to develop new te technologies. Right, and there's so many other things that we use infrared for. And there's so many other things that we use sensors for radio waves or gamma. Wi-Fi, for microwave. example was invented by mm -hmm. astronomers trying to make so we have images the internet to sharper. Wireless internet, all because of science. Right, because and, of science. And astronomy. Yeah, and astronomy. Go. So this is the most popular check-in spot, Instagram spot, here in the Astro Park. It's how the universe is, how infinite the universe is. And you're invited to take a look at that. And that's what we perceive the universe. It's, it's really vast. It's, the sun is only one of 200 billion stars in the Milky Way. And there is about 100 billion galaxies like the Milky Way outside. So this is the, 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 the perception of, of vastness of the universe. That, that idea like that there's convey. more stars than there are grains of sand exactly. on Earth. It it's almost mind-boggling in a way it's just almost, to realize how large space is. Exactly. Well, I wish I could talk to you about science all day, but unfortunately our time has come to an end. But well, thank you so much. You are invited. Uh, well, there's so many more to see. There, there's that radio dish, mm -hmm. there is that uh, and the telescope, telescope on, on top of the mountain. On top of the mountain and also the uh, surface of the moon and the Saturn's ring here in winter. Okay, we'll, we'll definitely have to do that. And we will be back, hopefully, to do those episodes later on Thailand Today. You know, there's, um, there's a saying about astronomy, which is that when you look up at the night sky, you see the past. But walking around here and just seeing all the kids being so excited about science, I see the future here. And I think what you guys have done here, both in your lab and in your science center, is just so exciting and so much fun. Uh, and I hope that you continue to do that and to inspire the engineers and the scientists of tomorrow. Well, I'm glad you're here to tell well, the, everyone about the future that is happening here and well, thanks again for coming. It was definitely our pleasure and if you want to check this out for yourself, bring your family, bring your kids, please do so. It's open every day. Except Monday. Except Monday. That's it for our show today, but we broadcast every Friday at 11 p.m. on NBT2 HD and every Saturday at 9.30 p.m. on NBT World, as well as live on our NBT World YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and comment on our Facebook page, Thailand Today Online. I'm Michael New. Sweaty cup. Sweaty cup. Can I check out the, uh, the planetarium? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. You can take a peek. Mm -hmm.